today we're here to celebrate one of the American Journal of Epidemiology's most influential papers in the past hundred years, titled Causal Knowledge as a Prerequisite for Confounding Evaluation and Application to Birth Defects Epidemiology by first author Miguel Hernan, Sonia Hernandez-Diaz, Martha Whirler, and Alan Mitchell. We're speaking with, on behalf of the authorship team, Dr. Miguel Fernand, who's Polo Catrone's Professor of Biostatistics and Epidemiology at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. So this paper was published in 2002. Can you tell me a little bit more about what was happening in causal inference at the time? It was an exciting time. In the previous decade, uh, we had seen the birth of a formal counterfactual theory for causal inference for complex longitudinal data by Jamie Robbins, and also the development of causal diagrams by Judea Per. These two methodological developments were coexisting with informal and often incorrect approaches to causal inference that were still widely taught in academic programs. Uh, for example, the teaching of the concept of confounding was very confusing and very confused at the time in many places. And we were being taught to select confounders using um, things like backward selection or forward selection. So there was some tension between the old guard, so to speak, who didn't quite understand what the fuss was all about, and a new generation of methodologies who had taken causal inference seriously. Uh, Claire Weinberg's AJE paper in 1993, towards a clear definition of confounding, is an illustration of that tension. Uh, but Ken Rothman had already been warning epidemiologists about the blind use of biostatistical methods for, for a long time. And of course, Sandy Greenland and Jamie Robbins had published seminar papers that dissected causal concepts in ways not seen before. One of the things that this paper does talk about is collider bias. So if you had to explain that to a teenager and its relevance to this paper, how would you explain that quite simply? Um, I'm going to use an explanation that I read on Twitter <laughs> because it's a very good one. If a restaurant has been in business for a long time and their service is poor, they probably serve excellent food. That is poor service and excellent food become associated when we condition their common effect, which is the survival of the business. And that's the collider. This association would happen even if service and food were not associated when considering all restaurants, irrespective of how long they have been in service. So collider bias is a form of selection bias. What else, or what did you feel like was the most important contribution of this paper? The beauty of causal diagrams is that they can be used to convey many of the implications of the formal counterfactual theory in an accessible way, in a way that doesn't require deep mathematical understanding. So when writing this paper, we were standing on the shoulders of giants. In a, in a way, we were at the, at the right place at, at the right time, because we have been given all the tools needed to explain the implications of this formal causal inference theory using simple graphs in such a way that anyone with sufficient interest, even those with little mathematical background, could understand what all the fuss was about. To me, causal, causal inference is not a separate set of tools for epidemiologists because most of what epidemiologists do is causal inference anyway. If we conduct a case control, a, a case control study, we are doing causal inference. If we adjust for confounders in a cox mall, that's causal inference too. I'm curious, just from a personal perspective, how did you particularly get involved in this work or how did your interest develop? It was a natural thing for me. When I was in medical school and, and I was being told how to treat patients and when someone has the symptoms, you have to do this. When, some, when this happens, you have to do that. My question always was, how do they know that? So when I, when I got into epidemiology was to a large extent because I didn't because I wanted to um, to understand how how people learn what works and what harms and I, I had the the very good fortune of being able to work with 
Jamie Robbins and learn from him and learn the theory. And then in the middle of this, causal diagrams show up. And then it, I see that that is, that that is the perfect tool to be able to translate many of these concepts into simple pictures that people can understand easily. Thank you so much for speaking with me today and congratulations again on this honor. Thank you very much for having me here.